Good morning, everybody, and happy Thursday. Happy snowy Thursday for those of us who are in Ohio. Uh, my name is Lindsay Funtick, and I am the coordinator of volunteer ministries at Ashland First United Methodist Church. And every Thursday, I hop on here to share a little bit about my devotional thoughts for the week and some of the things that the Lord has been teaching me. So if you tuned in last week, you know that I'm doing kind of like a mini series of practical suggestions when it comes to quiet time, uh, which uh, is kind of Christianese as they call it, uh, for just sitting down and being alone with the Lord on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, and it often includes scripture, which we talked about last week. I uh, talked about some questions that we can ask of a text so that we can see what it reveals about God, what it reveals about humanity, about the relationship between the two, and how it applies to our life. So uh, I hope that those were a blessing to you. Um, feel free with any of this as you're practicing and kind of uh, exploring what the Lord might have for you in quiet time. Um, feel free to share. I'd love to process my own journey with you, to pray with you. Um, we are not on this road alone as ever. So we talked about scripture last year, or last week, excuse me. Uh, today, we're going to talk a little bit about prayer. And so obviously, there are volumes written about prayer. There's a lot to be said about it. Um, but today, I want to focus on the practical. And our working definition uh, that we're going with for prayer today is communication with God. And that can look a lot of different ways. So the three, I have three prayer practices I will suggest today, but those are just three of so many. So um, take this, take these things, adapt them, uh, see what the Lord has for you in that. Um, but as we sit down daily with the Lord to be formed into the image of Jesus, uh, we are to be in communication with God. We are to listen. We are to share our own heart with Him and to have this back and forth. So here are just three things that we can put into practice that might help us as we pursue prayer in quiet time. So the first, and again, I can't take uh, credit for these things much like last week. I picked them up somewhere along the way and you have probably heard of them, um, but it is I found that they are very helpful scaffoldings on which I've been able to build. So, the first is ACTS prayer, A-C-T-S. Um, and basically, this stands for adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. So it moves through four, those four movements of prayer that we start by telling God how awesome he is and things we appreciate, appreciate about him. Confession, we air out those things which we, where the ways we've messed up, um, things weighing heavy on our hearts. Thanksgiving, we thank God for whatever bubbles to the surface. And supplication is things that we ask for. Uh, and I like this, this prayer model for two, two main reasons. The first, I like that it helps me to order my thoughts. When my brain has felt jumbled, I've been able to turn to this prayer model and say, okay, this is what I adore. This is what I need to confess. It kind of it sections it out in a way that helps me to process what I want to say the, to the Lord and what he wants to say to me. And the other thing too, is it kind of forces us, it helps us to get into the discipline of having our prayers not be one note. So um, if you find that all of your prayers are, God, I messed up, God, I messed up, I forgive me, I messed up. If, if you weigh heavily on confession, this also makes space for Thanksgiving um, for you to say, um, what you enjoy about God to kind of move you into those more lighthearted spheres and vice versa. If, if your prayer practice is mostly, um, God, give me this, or I really could use this. It fits always supplication. It helps to follow that and surround that, uh, with also just adoring who he is and what your relationship means to you. So the acts prayer model Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication. And this is good for newbies. I, anyone who's kind of traversing into this for the first time, this is the prayer model that I, um, that I always suggest because I find it to be very helpful. Uh, it's also for those seasoned veterans of us who um, can go back to basics um, and again, to help order our thoughts. So that's our first, the first option of what you could try. The second is fixed hour prayer. So this is relatively new to me. Um, 
I didn't grow up in any sort of liturgical um, tradition. Uh, but basically, there are these things called the divine hours or the daily offices, um, the liturgy of the hours. It's There's a lot of different expressions, but it is these times throughout the day that have fixed prayer um, that is used a lot in monastic communities and different churches. And also, there's kind of been this resurgence of praying the daily offices in uh, just everyday life in your individual time your quiet time. So really these are liturgical prayers. They're often written and they are to be said at different times throughout the day. So I use, um, you've heard me talk about it before, but the Divine Hours by Phyllis Tickle. Uh, and it is a three, there are three books in the series. I'm currently on Prayers for Springtime. Uh, and I really like the two reasons I advocate for this type of prayer model is one, it uh, helps to ground us in tradition and in community. When I pray the divine hours, when I pray the daily offices, I know that somewhere in the world, there's a monk who is also, you know, doing his his midday, the, praying the midday office or um, a church that has a Vesper service. Like these things, morning, noon, night, and right before bed is when I pray them. And it's nice to know we are not in this alone. We are a global Christian community and there are other people who are praying these things with you. So I love the way that it grounds us in that and it grounds us in the tradition of the liturgical calendar and in uh, written prayers. And I also just really like the structure of it. Um, it's a really valuable thing to have just an ongoing conversation with the Lord throughout the day. Um, but it's also nice to pause and be like, all right, between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. is when I pray the morning office. You know, it, you have these set moments that cause you to drop what you're doing and to pray. And I find that to be a very helpful structure for me. And as always, it's nice to have um, the, wor the beautiful words of others even when we don't have our own. So by way of example, I'll just share, this is the uh, prayer that John and I, it's from The Divine Hours by Phyllis Tickle. Uh, this is the prayer that John and I pray every night right before we go to bed. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior whom you have prepared for all the world to see. A light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And that's part of uh, the nighttime liturgy, the Compline. Um, and it's been a really big blessing. So there's lots of resources for liturgical prayer, fixed hour prayer uh, online, or I have a link in my blog post for the Divine Hours. And lastly, uh, I want to challenge us. This one's a bit less concrete, but I have to say this is probably my favorite. And that is imaginative prayer. And again, this can take a lot of different forms. Um, I know that I was kind of introduced to this through um, some spiritual direction directors who are trained uh, through Healing Care Ministries uh, by Dr. Terry Wardle. And uh, it has been wonderful to have someone kind of walk me through what it means to open my imagination to God. And that's really all this is. Uh, you don't need a spiritual director, you can sit down I always advocate for pouring your coffee uh, and ask the Holy Spirit to sanctify your imagination. Uh, just open it up and see what images come. Um, this can be. A, this has been a really big blessing for me as I've processed things in my own life. Um, but also, this is a really good way to pray forward. Uh, so I just want to give an example. Uh, so every week I pray in our sanctuary and I invite others to come and join for just a time of respite midweek uh, to meet with the Lord in a quiet and safe place. Um, and I was praying yesterday. I always like to pray over the, the room itself. And um, the, uh, the image that came to mind that the Holy Spirit gave me was of gently falling snow. And so I was able to kind of dwell in that image and understand it to be um, the gentle kindness of the spirit and also the crisp, cool reinvigoration for our faith family and for the church worldwide. So as I was in the sanctuary praying, I was praying s snow, um, the snow of the spirit to come, to collect in drifts, to kind of, um, yeah, reinvigorate us, uh, 
help us to play in that, to enjoy the presence of God, and then to have that snow stick to our boots as we go to a broken world as we leave. So that's just one example of what imaginative prayer can bring forward. And I want to, with this one, I just want to say, don't be scared. <laughs> it's a little bit kind of odd um, at first, but I really think that there are things that come to mind that are spirit driven that we don't even realize. So this just gives us space to recognize that and to dwell on those images that are brought to our minds and our hearts through opening up our imagination. And as someone who st studied theater and creative writing, I really appreciate God's use of the imagination. So with all of that, my challenge to you is to give one or all of these a try. Um, as we go through this week, um, my prayer for you and for myself is that our prayer lives will continue to grow in richness and fullness and health um, and that we would feel free to exercise and to practice and to try new things um, as we seek to meet with the Lord daily. Uh, and again, these are just three examples. There are so many others, um, but hopefully this will give you a springboard. And as a member of your church staff and as your sister in Christ, uh, share with me, let me know how it goes. Uh, I am really excited to continue this conversation uh, and to process as disciples side by side. So with that, First United Methodist, as always, I love you. I'm thinking of you. I'm praying for you. I'm praying the snow of the spirit. Sorry if I had anything to do with the snow outside last night, but um, I just pray that everyone stays safe and I look forward to seeing you all very soon.